Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another fulfillment of a promise, nay, a threat, where I had previously threatened to quick view the Flash Hobby CLS 1227RP for 124th scale RC monster car. SCX 10.3, SCX 24. I don't know. It seems like they just uh, they just picked buzzword terms there. I don't know. Regulars will know I'm a Flash Hobby guy. The 50 kg, 60 kg direct powers, the 50 kg receiver powered, including brushless and cordless. Fantastic servos. You get a lot of servo for the money. And the 1227 is a servo that makes, makes some claims, my friend. Makes some claims. 8.4 volts. 152 ounces, 11 kg uh, for about 35 bucks. I will begin by stating what we can and can't, what we do and don't. What we can do is we can install this, we can test it in an application suited to what we do here, which means dig servo, two speed servo, etc. I cannot speak to how this thing will work as a steering servo because I do not futz with the small scale stuff. Now, if it makes good on the 11 kg, 150 ounces, that's that's way above, that's 50% more torque, almost 50% more torque than a Reefs 99. Reefs 99 is, I think, 110, 111 ounces, something around there. 150, uh, which is quite a lot. And the speed, uh, if it didn't show up when I held it briefly. 8.4 volts, 0 0.07, 0 0.08 on 7.4, and a tenth of a second at 6 volts. So this is a servo that I would I would run at 8.4 volts. And uh, I'm, I'm actually running it at 8.2. This is all a ruse. It's all a ruse. There's nothing in there. That box is empty because I've already, I've already done the work. It is all right there. Look at that centered in the frame and everything um one might say because this is the third servo iteration that has graced this vehicle first time around we had the bracket that came in the lcxu this is tangentially related to the installation of the 1227 are we cold yeah we're cold gotta make sure my endpoints are good the stock bracket is designed for a servo like this, but if you'll see, I build a bracket that spaces it over about seven, eight millimeters this way to give me some standoff space between the linkage that actuates the dig and the arm on the servo. They give you no such thing because it's designed for the little axial springy servo. Terrible, terrible. The reason we're doing this is we want... We want this kind of response. That's the whole reason. We're, well, okay. That's the primary reason we're going to this. Uh, related to that reason. Is that hot? It feels a little hot. Uh, part of the reason that we go to this is because of weight savings. I am generally, in this case, very economical because the usual high performance servos in this micro range are $45 and up, $45, 45 to 47 for an AGFRC A20 CLS. Uh, Reefs 99 will usually put you back about $60. Meanwhile, uh, a servo like this DS Power DS HO15A half height, uh, these servos are about $18. The JX4409 is about $15. Uh, bracket goes right in. So we opt for this over this because while this is $15, $18, uh, this assembly is about two ounces heavier than this full assembly. So we've got a, a substantial weight reduction, and it's relatively high weight, and we've got the speed. These are okay in terms of speed. Uh, I would say around 0.12 is where they are. Uh, there's a big difference between 0.12 and 0.07 particularly when the total throw is, you know, look at the, watch the shaft change length, right? That's the, that's the full distance that we're pulling. So we're going really short. I want to be able to engage and disengage dig as quickly as possible. A slow servo, and by slow, I mean slower than this, 
can have a tendency to, while the arm is moving through its sweep, the, the, the paws, the dogs, are still rotating. So you can get that, like, ha 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 uh, whether shifting from one gear to another in a two-speed or engaging or disengaging dig. So quicker servos are better. But in most cases, uh, economy rules the day because I don't want to spend 60 bucks. 35 though. 35 though is not a huge... Like, I still... I, I, I loathe paying $35 for something this small. The Enjora which was tested recently. We'll talk about it. Same, same basic form factor, a little smaller. Uh, not nearly as fast, rated at 7 kg. And what I can tell you is that this little guy, if you would push on the horn like this while it was powered, you could feel like you could feel that you were overpowering it. This thing doesn't. It, it feels like a rock. You can't, you can't move it at all. Uh, it, but it may well indeed be making good on that 150 ounces. All I know is it's really fast and it comes with an aluminum horn. The aluminum horn has the usual drawbacks that I'm assuming 24th scale guys are used to, which is the holes, the threaded holes in the horn are what? 1.7 millimeters, something weird like that. Is that a screw size that you guys use? Uh, here in the big, here in the big world, uh, two, 2.5, three. That's Pretty much it. That's pretty much all we do. So the second hole in the horn, I drilled out and retapped to 2.5 millimeters, and it's just uh, screwed in with a little, cut a little piece of aluminum to act as a, act as a linkage. And so far, so good. We do need to test it on the rocks because I want to see holding power. I want to see when it is under load. How good is this guy at putting it into dig and pulling it out of dig? Because doing this back and forth on the bench is very different than getting it on a rock like this when it's when digs engaged here, and I'm trying to pull the front end over and then like get to here disengage dig. How quick is it going to disengage? Because I have in the past found instances where I can stall that dig servo out, where it it gets stuck, and you either have to do a little roll back or a little roll forward to get through it, which is why this thing has a different servo mount in it than this. Because with the stock one, you could you could overpower the servo because there's no leverage. This little guy in the middle, sometimes that's all you need for the leverage. So this guy does have the benefit of leverage, but I think I think he'd be plenty strong. You wouldn't be able to use the uh, the axial guy anyway because you know their their whole spectrum horn thing. The solitary drawback of this servo that I have found so far on the bench during build and installation is that the screw, it comes with a little Phillips head screw to hold the horn on. And God help me, I don't know what it is. It's not 2 millimeter. It's not 2.5 millimeter. It's something in between. It has an extremely fine thread. Uh, 24 scale guys that, uh, that come over here into the big world now and again, let me know in the comments what is that thread. Because for me, like, that's the only one of those I've got. So I had to make sure to put some thread lock on there because if that guy falls out, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I, I, I do not know what size that screw is. So everything went together swimmingly. As I mentioned, I had, to, I had to fabricate a new bracket to hold it. And because it was the second bracket I've manufactured for this particular vehicle, I don't think it shows up at any angle that I hold it. Uh, it's just made out of some... It's under three millimeter. It, it's a... Uh, it's carbon fiber. I made, it, I made a little piece of carbon fiber, which did help in bringing the weight of that down. But you saw in the photo, if the editor remembered to put it in, bracket horn servo, 28 grams, one ounce for actuating the whole dig mechanism. Whereas this guy with his horn was like 78 grams, three ounces, 2.75, 2.8. Anyway, it's got the speed. It feels like it's got the torque. It looks the part. Nothing to do. But I uh, try to rack my aged and addled brain and remember spots where I use dig a lot. So let's do that. I feel I'd be remiss if I did not mention here in the canyon, there are two causes of servo death. One, 
is incorrectly set endpoints, which I managed to catch most of the time by a strict regimen of this is the first run of the 1227 in here. It is going to get the thumb test many times because when you are running a servo like this in an application where it is basically zero clearance, it's like a zero clearance motor. If the timing, change, timing chain snaps, everything gets bent. So what happens in here is a dig servo has two positions. It has the four wheel drive position and it has the rear wheels locked position. When it's at neutral, which is effectively the four wheel drive position, it can't be loading the servo horn. And because we are rigidly mounted, there's no real way to tell if it is or not. My use of just a tiny little linkage to link the two together, that is, that is dancing on the edge and potentially flying too close to the sun. If there was any sort of give in that, in that item, we would be safer but we are we're we're taking it risky with this one so when you set your endpoints to set this thing up for a digger at two speed set them very carefully and very conservatively you want it just enough to make sure that it's fully engaged in four-wheel drive and just enough to where it engages dig when you actuate dig and it will feel fine on the bench but i will need to test it more than once so we would dig here, little pop as it came back out, little pop, because it's fully loaded. And the click, do you hear the click? We are not fully engaged into four wheel drive. So you can't, you can't tell on the bench, you have to test it. And especially in applications like this, where the horn is so small, and the throw is so short. See, no click when it engaged. I went from, is it percent or is it just numbers? It is percent. The so Radiolink RC4GS is being used for radio duties here. Uh, you, you adjust endpoints in percent. I went from 42% in the one endpoint to 45%. And that was the difference between clicking. Like I said, you gotta, you gotta cut them fine. Just a, a dig tap set down. So our weight savings is very small. Our sp the speed is what is, no is most notable. Let me, get up, let me get up to the top here and dig turn it again. That is, that is luxurious, like Egyptian cotton, bay bay. And this thing has absolutely no problem engaging and disengaging from dig. It is, it is lightning fast. And I have stated in the past and will continue to state into the future. Do we have enough to pull this way? Get out of that hole. Get out of there. Oh, see that dig? I'm not doing that move. That's that's a dig move. Is it, I mean, did it land where I wanted it to? I don't know. So we get that front end settling real slow. Beep. Geometry helping us down. We can do the couple rapid digs, just pop it in the spot. That's a wide shot, but we'll shuttle back. Now let's opposite dig down. Full dig descent. Mm, mm, mm. I have said during the, the testings of the LCXU, we're getting tangential again, everybody. Uh, talking about the LCXU, it has a fantastic dig. The dig activates so quickly. And when you pair it with a servo that can actuate it that quickly, man, have you got something good. Thumb check. It's actually index finger check. I can't reach that particular servo with my thumb, but my index finger is, is tuned. 
And uh, I did indeed test it with my left hand because my right hand, uh, I have burned several of my, that little aluminum piece, that little linkage you saw. Let me tell you something obvious. That heated up so fast when I touched it to the sander. I think I heard my skin go tss. So uh, take, take extra care, people. I want to get past that, that knob right there. What's under the axle right now. Okay, let me... Can I get wider? Yeah, there we go. Maybe. Bump it. There we go. Yeah, that rock is... The stranding is unfriendly and vi right, right back onto it. Right back onto it. I wanted to try to do a little dig wrap right there in front of the, the front end loader there. Not loader. That's a bulldozer. It's like a Dina. Oh, get through. Get through. Get through. Bump it. There we go. Ooh. Yeah. This is the best dig I got. If I had to point fingers and name names, I would say least impressive dig actuation, two-way tie, uh, and potentially coincidental that they're both axial boxes, but original 10-3, it still, it still vexes me. Okay, I say I was forgetting. So watch me work. So I'm getting right up here. You see the body roll because we're getting pressure up on top of the tire. So see that front end up? So if I come back to the same spot and we hit dig before we make this move right here, we can pull ourselves out from under that rock and really give a better line to shoot that. Again, dig, pull the front end over, right up over the top. 10-3 pre-base camp and Capra. The Capra dig, I don't know if it was the way that they uh, positioned the servo or what, but it was, an, or just that, that saver that anybody with an axial transmission that has a dig unit attached knows what I'm talking about, that little servo saver springy thing that is uh, presumably designed to save uh, uh, SX-107s but nothing is saving that servo. They just, they don't work. Like, it, it turns it into mush. This is a solid linkage. So when we dig, it is immediate. And when we let go, it is instant. And yeah, we saved it. So right here, oh, I thought I'd need to use a dig to reposition the front end. We'll, we'll dig right here to pull this side. If you haven't done dig yet, guys, you've got, you've got to get some dig. That servo, the 1227 is, remain, has remained ice cold, thankfully. And I've engaged dig about 40 times, so. And even when we're up high on the load here, let me. Oh, man, that is good. And here's the beauty. Here, here's the real and true unfiltered beauty. I have a, let's pull it, pull it. A little more, a little more. There it is. That was all dig. That was a, that was a full dig pirouette. I have nearly immediate experience, both off of the Enjora 7kg, which did not get tested in a setup like this. He will be being put into another vehicle, and then I will be able to both mentally and in an episode, compare the Enjora is half the price of this, roughly half the price. I want to say they're about $19, a little over half the price. Is it worth the, the additional money, particularly when taking into consideration the fact that the Enjora is just a regular 25 spline Futaba, not a 25 micro like what's in here? So you can put any horn on that Enjora, and it uses a three millimeter screw to hold the horn on. It's slower, it's not as strong, it's not as cool looking. It's, did I mention that it's slower? But, it, there's give and takes here for sure. 
you would have to wrestle me uh, in physical contest to get me to take the 1227 out of here. This thing is... This thing is so good. And this guy has some steering angle to him. Thought I might be able to pull that front end down, but we got the rear hiked up too high. A little bit right here. This guy's, this guy's dig capability is, maybe I can pull that front. Just wanna pop it right there. This guy's dig capability is not fair. It is not fair. The LCXU is a gearbox that puts, I know I'm talking about a lot, I've, sa uh, I've said it before, in a review, if I'm not talking about the thing that we're reviewing, the thing that I'm reviewing must be doing real good. And I'm talking about the LCXU right now, which in dig terms is the best dig actuation I've tested yet. At some point, I would like to test the add-on Hertz dig unit for a VFD, and I have high hopes for that. But in in terms of what has been tested up till now, nothing comes close to the dig in the LCXU. It comes on like lightning. And when you pair it with a servo this fast, wrap it on the dig. It yeah. That is that that is cheat codes. If dig in and of itself is not a cheat code. Dig compared to this particular servo is a cheat code. This servo is highly recommended, people. And I own six A20 CLSs. My forever number of A20 CLSs that I own is going is to stay at six. And I love those AGFRC servos. But I can get this servo for at least $10 less. Nope. Erase that. Rewind. Way more than $10 less because it comes with an aluminum horn. The A20s come with a selection of plastic horns. And if you want the fancy AGFRC horn, which looks pretty much exactly like the one that comes with this Flash Hobby, that horn is $14.99. So I have a number of Vanquish Phoenixes outfitted with a pair of A20 CLSs at what, $90 for the servos and 30 for the horns, 120 bucks. So instead of 120 bucks, you can get two of these for 70. You picking up what I'm putting down? Uh, not just that it's cheaper. Cheaper does not always mean better, but it does mean better in this case because this servo is every bit as capable as the A20 CLS or a Reefs 99, or dare I say an NRSDRC RS100. I'm gonna dig right here and see if I can position the front end without roll. Nope, we're gonna roll. This guy was nimble and agile before. Let's see if we can reposition all the way over. Yeah, sure, why not? That dig is so fast. The dig is so fast that I hope there were moments you could actually see it was being engaged. It's being engaged right here, but I'm a little too high. I needed to be a little more right there. Got a little spicy, but he'll stay down. We dig to keep the front end for... I'm still not an expert uh, dig applicator, but I feel like I'm getting better. And this servo, oh, it feels so good. I'm gonna have to, just maybe for myself, just maybe for my own thing, uh, bring Yella out here who is fitted with an RS100 for his dig and have him go, I just wanna pick one up, drive, pick the other one. They're both running RS500 servos. Uh, they're both LCG, they're both similar, only we've got an Amazon dig box versus an LCXU. Did I mention that the real drawback of the LCXU is that it mounts the motor like absurdly high? Absurdly high. Other than that, I see no drawbacks. It's pretty, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. It's the only act. Even those who are regulars here might not know. Of all the vehicles in the fleet, you are looking at the solitary axial manufactured gearbox in the entire fleet. Around 40 vehicles 
one axial gearbox. It's this one. They took everything that they did wrong when they released the Basecamp RTR and they fixed it with the Basecamp kit. It's my favorite axial for sure, for sure, for sure. And the, and the Flash Hobby, I'm just calling it the 1227. I can't remember, CLS, whatever it is. I can't remember all the numbers and letters. I can remember 1227. This thing is superb. Uh, Canyon certified 100%. If you have a base camp kit with the LCXU fitted with DIG, do yourself a favor and, and get one of these to run it. I would also say move your DIG servo if possible. The stock configuration, well, this servo might not sing as cleanly if it is saddled with that terrible axial servo saver mechanism. Hook up direct, set your endpoints, rock this guy, 35 bucks. What an absolute deal. And I will go so far as to say, I'm, I'm talking ether now. I don't know, I don't know. But I think for 24th scale steering servo guys, this is, you, you will be like, this is too much. This is too much. It's gonna be too strong and too fast. Or maybe it isn't, I don't know. 24th scale guys, put a 1227 in there and tell me, is it too strong? Is it too fast? If you're running dig or a two speed or both, yeah, really, really good, really good. My, pretty much my go-to for dig and two speed now is, is that servo right there. Absolutely worth it. I have no qualms about paying 35 bucks for it. Even though when I stop and think about it for even a few seconds, a blue case Amazon that makes 600 plus ounces of torque is $29. Micro servos still frustrate me to no end, but this one is a little less frustrating than the others because man, is it good. I love the speed, I love the torque. I love the dead silence of it. We have, we have no draw, it comes with a horn, an, an aluminum horn. I see no drawbacks, everybody. It's, it's, my, uh, it's my pick for micros now. Real good. So, what is left to say but to thank you one and all for watching, invite you to comment below, like, subscribe if you haven't considered a channel membership. You can pick up a t-shirt from Cafe Press or a, or a hoodie or a hat or whatever. I, I used to say I make $2, but I haven't seen a dime of that yet. So. Maybe I make $2? I don't even know. Um, thank you all for watching. If you have any other things like this that you would like to suggest that I test or some other aspect of this that I might not have covered, please do mention it in the comments below. And until the time becomes such that we meet again, please one and all do your very best. Have a good one, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, Zawazu, take us home, buddy.